How was your weekend? That is good. Is everybody... Okay, more sugar, more coffee, more extremely unhealthy substances that will stimulate you into wakefulness. <laughs> Gaming. Leveling up games and game development as a career path for you. This is Gaming Week, so much nerdery shall abound. The games industry in the Puget Sound area is $35 billion a year and rising at this point, according to a recent Puget Sound Business Journal article. I know a lot of the folks that are deeply involved in gaming, and while we'll talk about some of the issues involved in gaming, and I'm, by that I mean the negative issues involved in gaming on Wednesday, today it's going to be about the positives and what you do get out of it if you join the uh, games industry. So first of all, the games industry in this area, Big Fish, PopCap, uh, Valve, shoot, just about every one of them. Um, I've worked for Microsoft Game Studios at this point. What other ones? Uh, was, uh, uh, Valve is here. Valve is here. What other, uh, what other games uh, companies in the area? What's that? EA has, EA has an office here. OK, yeah. I think it seems reasonable. What's that? What's that? Yeah, I think there's something Konami? Yeah. Is Konami in Seattle? No, not Seattle. Oh, what other what other games companies are in Seattle? Big Fish. Big Fish, yep. Popcap. Popcap, yep. Name those already. Go for it. Keep going. More games companies. Uh, Google away. What's that? Uh, Google. What? Unreal. Shout out. Unreal. Unreal. Okay, got it. Any others? What is the biggest and fastest growing segment of gaming? Mobile, mobile gaming. Very good, exactly. If you can program games for mobile applications, if you can pro program mobile games, you are setting yourself up for a solid career for the next probably five to eight years. Okay? That's Objective C, C, and an understanding of either the Android or the iOS framework with an ability to execute in either of those frameworks. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I mean when I say that? Okay. All right. So what questions do you have about becoming part of the games industry? Shout it out. Yes. So I've heard like right when you get in, if you're designing a game or something, you're designing. Shout it louder. You're designing like a little bitty piece like a tree. Sure. When you very first start out in games, and I am, I am drawing a difference right now because this is information technology between the games industry as a whole and the video games industry as a whole. Gaming itself is actually much bigger than just uh, video game development or electronic game development. There's a lot of tabletop and design companies in the area that aren't even part of the video game industry, but the, the cross-collaboration between the two is near constant. Um, companies like, what is it, um, Pathfinder Games is here in town. There's, uh, what is it, something Neverwinter Publishing? No, that's not that one. Um, there's all, man, Wizards of the Coast, absolutely. Oh. Wizards of the Coast is in the area. So those are, these are collectible card games, adventure card games, things like that. A lot of comic books and gaming in the area. The nerd industry is huge in Seattle. And so if you can build a solid following or you are into programming mobile games, you're going to be set up really, really well. All right? So in video game development, what you're right, William, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to program a tree. And it's going to be a happy little Bob Ross tree. Like, let's give some happy little leaves. And that's what you're going to do. And it's going to be, do you program a tree well? Um, the next thing that you might end up doing, that, that's actually, that's one way to look at it, and that's as a graphic designer. But usually, actually, the first way people break into the games industry is they start as a tester. A tester is a terrible job. It's a horrible job. And the reason why is it is a human meat grinder. There are so many people that want to test games for a living that you are up against huge competition in games testing. If you want to start there and work your way up to something like software developer and test or software development um, in the games industry. I would not recommend that you start as a games tester unless that's the direction that you want to go. You certainly want to have that expertise. And the reason why is not necessarily that it's a terrible job inherently. It's more that so many people want to do that job that, that every game company, and some of them aren't like this, but a lot of them are, can afford to pay people minimum wage, treat them terribly, and treat them like a meat grinder because there is someone waiting right there to take that spot. I mean, wouldn't you want to play Halo all day long for a living, mm -hmm. right? I mean, kind of no, actually. I've, I've met the people that do that. It's not a lot of fun after a little bit. You're not playing the game through. You're sitting there watching the same 15-second clip for eight straight hours and picking out everything that's wrong with it. It turns kind of mentally numbing after a while. So 
You do that when you need some way to break into the games industry and you don't have a different set of skills. And if you do really well and you do a great job, then you can start to head into project management in games. You can, st you can head into QA in games and that's a great way to go. I actually often recommend that path for people who are um, non-traditionally educated, maybe older and trying to break back into technology because it's very much a factory job. If you get it and you do well at it, you can make a steady living at it at 20 bucks an hour. Okay? And then you start traveling off in a, in a different direction. The next part of the games industry is not the software side, but more the creative side. And there is both digitally creative and storytelling creative. There's a lot of people that write games in the area too. And that's where you get a lot of crossover between the analog gaming and the digital gaming set. Because people that write games and comic books often do a lot of crossover into the digital world where they're writing uh, the, the storylines for big games. Not as many for the triple A games in the area, but if you are a good storyteller and you have expertise in creating storylines, multiple branching storylines that are interesting and complex, and you can spell, you're going to have a great job. You'll, you'll end up contracting out to develop storylines for mobile games. All right? That is, it's a good job to have. The truth is, is that most of the people who want to write games or want to be in the games industry, that's the thing they want to do. So often they'll form the company around them being able to tell the story they want to and they hire other people to fill in the bits. But if you're at a company like PopCap or Big Fish or something along those lines, I think Zynga is no longer in the area. I think they moved to Silicon Valley, but I think they might have an outpost. Um, you're, you're not so much telling the story, uh, but you might end up being able to move up into that that area of design, of creative design. For graphic designers, if you're somebody who knows how to wield Photoshop mightily, you're going to be in a good situation as well. There's crossover between game development and web development or platform development for those games. So you could end up doing something like what I did for Halo, which is that I was actually doing the front end development for Halo.com, but a lot of the imagery crossed over, a lot of the design concepts crossed over from the game to the website, and that is to create an immersive experience. If you can do immersive experience creation across a game and websites, you're also really, really valuable. Okay, That's image placement and structuring the user experience to make the journey through a website and the journey through a game similar in theme and style. Okay, uh, There's a lot of games that will happen on Facebook, uh, games that people participate in on Facebook that are very, that are very content and graphics heavy and very light on mechanics of the game. And I'm thinking of games like Fall in London or something like that, where you participate in them and it's almost nothing more than just some multiple choices that'll take you to new pretty images. And it's still a, a beautiful experience and a story, but it's not really as much a game. It's more a choose your own adventure than it is what I could call a traditional video game, if that makes sense. Okay, so what questions do you have about the nature of the games industry? Does it make sense, those different paths that I've laid out for you? You can do testing, creative, development. The By far the fastest, it's going to take you longer in school and longer to train, but the fastest and most remunerative way into the games industry is become a, an application or games developer. And that is a lot of C++. You'll be working on something like the Unreal Engine, right? And if you're working on the Unreal Engine and you've got expertise doing that, uh, Unreal and Unreal Tournament are not the only games that use the Unreal Engine. I have no idea. Somebody Google up and tell me how many games there are right now using the Unreal Engine. All right? EA has got its own internal engine. BioWare has its own engine. Many of these engines are licensed out. And when I say engine, what am I talking about? Uh, environment in which to create the game. It, it, that is almost it. It is the environment in which to create the game. It is that environment, but what but it has more to do with the rules of the creation of that environment in terms of the physics of movement, of um, how fast scrolling speeds happen, how graphics are displayed, what you plug in to make what you're seeing. So what other games use the Unreal Engine? Deus Ex. Deus Ex, okay. Bioshock. What's that? Bioshock. Bioshock, awesome, keep going. Crisis. What? Crisis. Crisis, killer. All Duke right. Duke Nukem Forever. Duke Nukem Forever. Duke Nukem Forever uses the Unreal Engine? No way, okay, what else? Crisis, well, we already did Crisis. Okay, any others? Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Okay, there you go. So to get into working on any of those AAA platinum games, write C++ and do it really well. All right? That's how you'd break into, into working for any of the companies that would 
license out the Unreal Engine or any of those engines that are created. And there's there's other engines. The Unreal Engine is the one I'm the most familiar with. But that's how you, you get into those jobs. The games dev industry seems to be really focused on the east side in Seattle. So Redmond, Bellevue, not as many downtown. Downtown you're finding Amazon, uh, Facebook, you're finding the social media and retail companies. Part of the reason why I think is because game studios operate a lot closer to the edge than most companies do. Games are a very risky proposition, sort of like movies are. One of the reasons I tell you to specialize in a language and not in an engine or in a company is because it is very common for games studios to go under. There, it's a higher risk um, uh, company and, and product to develop. Do you understand why? It's art, it's entertainment. And art and entertainment is always going to be a higher risk, more attractive, lower paying occupation than dull ass boring logistics. You wanna write C++ for UPS and get a plane to its destination five minutes faster every single night? You'll make millions of dollars. But that you've, you've written software for years of your life to make a plane get someplace five minutes faster. So, you know, and that I'm not, I'm not, believe me, I am not throwing that down. If what your joy is in is in, is in fine tuning systems and you love doing that and it's involving the physics that you like to operate in, go for it. You're not going to have as much competition. What's that? Rather make a video game. A lot of people would rather make video games, exactly, just like you. They would rather make a video game. It, it is art. Um, as well as design, you should think of it and think of your career in games if you want to go that direction as much like being someone who works for the movies in Los Angeles, okay? If you are someone whose specialty is in, I don't know, name a, name a good filmy sort of occupation. Camera operator. Camera operator, awesome. A camera operator may or may not end up working through the course of their movie career at Universal Pictures, right? It's more likely that they're going to be hired on a job-by-job -job basis that movie might go under, it might not get all of its funding, it might fold in the middle of production, it might be a flop, uh, it, it might do great, you might get weird critique on it. Um, you're likely to be paid, and paid well to do it, but it's going to be a very unstable occupation, and that's part of the reason you would get paid well to do it. So the best of the best that are games developers and games designers, they make a quarter million dollars a year. They're very, very good, and there's very few of them, and part of the reason why is they're ultimate elite developers who have no other life. I have met some of them. I'm not sure they would remember meeting me. I'm not sure that they would remember meeting their breakfast burrito. Okay, other questions about the games industry? Am I kind of scaring you a little bit about it? What's that? A little, bit. a little bit. Well, it's. I'll tell you more about some of the good and bad of it, but part of the reason why we have this whole week and why we, we decided to do the Games Week instead of the Mobile Development Week is there's a lot of help for you folks in mobile development. A lot of people will, will help you out to get onto that path. Not a lot of people know the games industry from the inside and will be able to give you a, a path into careers there. So when you all requested that we do games instead of mobile dev for a week, the reason I wanted to do this was to give you kind of an inside look at it. So I, I mean, I know the people that, that develop at all these different companies. I know people that are at 343 Industries out in Kirkland doing Halo, you know, now. And um, it is a, it's a very challenging occupation. And the people that love it, that, are, that have just, they've drunk the Kool-Aid, they're into it hugely. They love their lives, although I will say there's a lot of culture in gaming and the games industry. And when I talk about the negative issues we'll talk about in gaming, I'm talking about cultural and social ones, which is what we'll deal with on Wednesday. Um, there, there are some negative issues in the gaming industry that involve workplace ethics. One of the problems is that many game studios often operate in crisis mode, much like a, um, a, a movie would, where it's very project-based. You don't work 40 hours a week if you were on salary at a game company. You work 90 hours a week, and that is it. Um, it is very much a, a younger person's job where you will burn out fast and you'll make a lot of money doing it. There are some problems, some pretty severe problems with diversity in the games industry. Um, we'll get in, like I said, the social and cultural issues around the, the games industry and the culture of, of gaming on Wednesday, especially when we start talking about what it's like to do community management in games. There's a lot of other occupations around the video games industry, like community management. Um, I knew the woman who used to do things like delete the negative comments on the Halo forums. So it, she would actually tell me all the time, this isn't easy enough to do. I need more ability to do this thing. And so there's a lot of, of industries and a lot of jobs around that. And yet at the same time, 
th there really is a, there's really a problem with that. Um, if you want to go into games, go into games. Use that to turn it into something else because by the time you're 35, 40, you don't, you don't want to do that anymore. And there are some companies that do their best to not have that be the culture. But gaming is, uh, you, the first thing you just said to me was I want to build a video game, right? I would rather build a video game. A lot of people would. That's why they can, they can not pay as much, why they can have people work longer hours. There's a lot of problems in the games industry. Um, if we see any movement towards collective rights for technology workers, I think it's probably going to be the games industry that it comes from, honestly. So any questions? Am I kind of weirding you out a little bit with this? I mean, I'd, I'd rather have you have this information. It's the same thing that I do when I talk to groups of, and I've talked to some of you about this too, when I talk to uh, groups of people about how to get tech jobs and I point out in advance to women and people of color and some of the additional issues that they'll face in technology, I often am making a choice in that in that moment. You know, do I do I tell you about this and kind of take the chance that I'm discouraging you into technology in, from from going into tech, or do I say this so that you will understand when you face these issues, you are not alone, you're not crazy, this is actually happening, and yes, you can compensate for it in advance and prepare for it so that it doesn't affect you either as much or at all. Okay. So there's, there are some disadvantages out there, but if you are aware of those and you know about them going into it, I feel like it's, I would rather give you more knowledge and let you choose yourselves how you want to prepare for that than anything else. So I'm going to be frank, the games industry is great, it's fun, and there's a lot of jobs in it right now in Puget Sound. There's probably 2,000 open technical jobs in the games industry in Puget Sound right now, today. I mean, that's a huge number. Any of you can go for those, lots and lots of them, okay? Digital marketing, community management, software development, web development. I really, I really like the web development part. It was like I was in the nerd industry, but sort of not quite. The service provider to the nerds, of which I am one. So, any questions about why I, I talk about this stuff the way that I do, or anything you want to know? Any of you? I mean, I know some of you are intending to go into gaming. That's why you asked to have these conversations. What in, What do you want to know now that you didn't want to know before? Any questions? I hear somebody humming and hawing back there. Are you, are you a little nervous to ask? I'm not Yeah. I'm more interested in web Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of service provider to the industry positions that I personally like better. I liked being a front end web developer. Um, it's 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 rough being a game developer. I think. Um, the ones that love it, they they that they would do nothing else for the rest of their lives. They adore it, and they have a wonderful time in the industry. I, I'm mostly making sure that you know about these things because of the expectation of additional hours that are irregular, long. A lot of people have a hard time, really hard time, balancing family life with games development. Not with web development, although I mean some of that, but if you work for a platinum studio and you're pushing out a game and a release date is coming soon, you are not, you're barely going to see your bed, much less your family, for um, six weeks before game date, okay? I mean, is that similar to how, I mean, if you work at Microsoft and you work on Windows 10? Is it similar to release, like major software releases like Windows 10 or something like that? No, it's worse. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's almost certainly worse. Now, I'm not going to say that there aren't people who have that experience when you push out a major release at a company like, like Microsoft. I've seen, certainly seen people work harder there. Um, I think the games industry operates in crisis mode needlessly a lot of the time. You can plan this stuff out a lot better, I think, but there's some ability to take advantage of the fact that people get are getting to do what they think of as their dream job. So if you're doing your dream job, you don't give it up because you have to work 110 hours for six weeks straight before release day. And then everyone takes like a week after that where no one actually does anything and they only eat pizza, but then they're right back on the job again at 90 hours a week. So. Yeah, just if you're going to go into that, that portion of the industry, you need to ask people anonymously in advance. You need to look on Glassdoor and Salary.com to find out what working for that, that place is actually like. And remember something really important. I knew somebody once who worked at a major, major company who said to me, if I really took all the hours that I work and all of my stock options and everything I expect to have, and I divided it out by the actual amount of time that I work, I would be better and happier off if I was asking, do you want fries with that? Financially better off on an hour by hour basis. So that should tell you something. But if that's your dream job, go for it. 
I heartily recommend that you start your own games company. So do be designing and creating games yourself. Tomorrow we're going to talk more about designing and creating games yourself because if you're going to do this, you're going to you're going to be able to do it on your own terms. And there's a lot of room in the industry to create your own games and to be a creative person and to make your own rules rather than work for one of the triple A's if you want to. What's the question? Oh, I was going to say I have a bunch of friends that do like video game creation. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how you make your own games and you set your own rules. Except there should be polyhedral dice involved somewhere, if only virtually. <laughs>